is. Okay, I think you guys are getting the hang of it. We've got a few more components to put on the board. How about a capacitor? Now, a lot of capacitors are electrolytic. This is not. This is a, a type of cap that does not have polarity. You can see it has no plus or minus or no banding. So it can actually go on the board in any direction you want. Do we have a pad for it? We do. Will it fit? Almost. <laughs> These are just extra components we had lying around. So actually, why don't I show you how to put a capacitor on that is a bit of a tight fit. Okay, so I like to have the labels up. So that you can actually tell what was installed. I do that on all components that have labels. So we're going to bring the lead in nice and tight like that. Try not to bend a lead with a hard turn. So use your skewer, the tip of it, to get a good snug bend like that. You see that? Now, often when you're doing uh, specialized work you're going to find let's say you're replacing a capacitor and the new capacitor is bigger than the old capacitor don't despair it's pretty easy to get them in so all you're going to do is this we're just going to do a little return bend like that nice and tight to the capacitor and then we're going to get in here and we're going to make a little turn like this that's all And let's see how that fits. That's going to be pretty good, I think. So let's try it. Excellent. Okay, you see how I've got it mounted? So it's sitting up a little bit. It's not ideal, ideal, but it, it'll work electrically just fine. So let's bend those leads back. Now, this is not as heavy as the blue junction. Uh, so we're going to turn down the iron. So we're going to come down to, I think 370C will work just fine, which is about 690 Fahrenheit. Let's see how that goes on. So I'm holding, I'm pressing and holding, and I'm just putting a dab of solder to get it going. And now I'm going to fill. And I hold for an extra second after I filled to get it to flow nicely out. By now, you're getting bored. And that's a good thing, because now I think you've got a handle on how it's all done. Now you may have noticed that there's no fan blowing and there's no window open. So I'm getting a little bit fumed here. That's all in the name of, of filming so that you can hear what's going on. <laughs> Trust me, uh, I never solder without uh, the window open, except for teaching videos. So let's have a look and see what we've accomplished. So we've got an, a non-standard capacitor in. I actually don't like the lead where it's sitting on the body. Let's find our poker. Okay, let's find another poker. So there's nothing wrong with adjusting a component after you've installed it. So I'm just going to come in here like this and I'm just going to make a little adjustment. You see what I've done? And we've got a little flow through of the solder and we've got nice rounded pads. So wonderful. You guys are doing great. Okay, what about an electrolytic capacitor? So electrolytics will have bands, and the bands always tell you the negative. The racetrack that looks like a negative sign, well, that's exactly what it is. So the short lead is the negative, the long lead is the positive, in most cases, but all electrolytics have at least a band to tell you what 
is the negative lead. And on the PCB or wherever you're installing it, you'll see Charles is really great at designing these PCBs. Um, so there's a positive and there's a band symbol. So you've got to be really careful with electrolytics because if you put them in backwards, they'll blow up. <laughs> they'll go pop. If they're really big capacitors, there'll be a significant um, explosion hazard. So don't make this mistake. And before we solder in an electrolytic, we always check band to band. Okay, we're good. And our temperature is right now at about 370C, which is about 690 Fahrenheit, uh, which should be good for this size of capacitor. But let's see. Okay, the solder is flowing nicely. Let's fill. Let's hold for a second. Release. Let's give it a second to cool off and then we'll come to the other side. Same thing. We're going to put a little dab of solder in there to get it flowing. We're going to fill. We're going to hold. We're going to release. We're going to clean our tip. You're going to always be cleaning your tip. It's going to be second nature by the time you're done um, this video. Now, here's a little pro tip. On many capacitors, they have nice, heavy, extra long leads. Save these in a nice little container because if you need a little jumper on a board, um, these are just fantastic. In fact, why don't we use one? Now, the really thin ones, no, forget about that stuff. But nice, heavy ones, you'll know right away when you've got one. And this board actually has some spots where you can put a jumper. So this is marked jump six. So let's just make two corner bends or 90 degree bends like this. Let me get it on camera for you. And there you go. So just press it in there and bend your leads back and solder it on just like you would a component. So a little tiny dab of flux. Our temperature might be a touch hot. Now notice how the board's not stable anymore because we put the big capacitor on. Normally you do a small component, all the small components, and then um, you would do the big components. And there's a reason why you do it that way, because the board becomes unstable otherwise. So, let's get a little block of wood and lift the board up and see if that helps. Okay, we put a drop of solder and we'll fill. Drop of solder and we'll fill. And let's get those snipped. Notice I'm holding the leads. Now, normally when I snip leads, what I do is I have a nice wide garbage can right beside my lab bench and I hold the components over the garbage can away from my eyes and I snip like this, right? Now, I'm not gonna hold this one so you can hear what happens. That's why we've gotta be very careful of snipping leads because they come flying off like little projectiles. Okay, let's do something a little bit more challenging. Let's get um, a socket on. You can see here that I've located pin one, pin one is on the opposite side of where you think it would be. So it's always done from the point of view of the builder. There's the keyway, flip it over, and there's the key, and it's always gonna be this pin over here on this side, and I've marked it. Now, luckily, this ceramic bit, uh, socket base actually has the pin numbers marked. That's not very common, though. 
So I've got my one there. Our boards are always labeled as to which side uh, the socket actually goes on. The most common terrible thing you can do is to put the socket on the wrong side of the board. Don't do that. This is probably going to be the most challenging soldering job you'll ever do building one of our kits because we don't have any integrated circuits. Everything is passive components basically and getting everything lined up though is really important. So I'm going to get I'm going to go over these and get them straightened. Now you just go around and use your little skewer to line up your your pins into their holes and get them started. Take your time. It can be a little bit tricky uh, but when it all goes together, it'll be great. So here we go. Got everybody's on. And now I, I would like that to stay put while I'm working on it. So flat nose pliers are great for this. Just bend a couple of the tabs to hang on to it for the moment. And then go around and bend them all down a little bit. You don't have to press them all the way down hard. Now this is in the road and I would never have put this on when I did, but we were working our way through components and working our way up to a harder job. So I'm actually just going to swing it over and out of the road. Normally, uh, the larger capacitors are the last thing that I would put on a board. Today, though, we save the hardest job till the end. Okay, now, we've got lots of thermal mass because we've got the lead, we've got the receiver, we've got a big pad. So we're going to bring up our temperature quite a bit. So I'm thinking we're going to need something like 390 C, which is about 730 Fahrenheit. We're going to need a little bit more flux. I'm not going to do the whole socket with you because these videos can run a little bit too long. We'll just do two, maybe three of the pads. Let's get that so you can really see what's going on. Now when you bring up a temperature on an iron, sometimes it takes a few minutes, especially if you're coming up a lot. So let's just give it a second to warm up. Let's put some tools away. Okay, we're nice and hot. Now I'm going to put a little bit more solder than normal on the tip. Make sure we're clean and tinned and another nice big blob and in I come and I'm pressing fairly firmly down on the pad and the and the lead at the same time. It's flowing out really nicely. I'm filling and I'm off. Let's take a look at what happened. Now I put a fair amount of solder on and look what happened. There's almost nothing left. Where did it go? Well it flowed right through as a big blob. Now it's not a disaster yet, but what we did was we put too much heat and the solder basically wa just washed away. <laughs> so let's turn down the iron from 390 to 380. C and 380C is 710 Fahrenheit. About. These conversions aren't exact, but they're they're close enough. Now, you could go to a heavier gauge solder, and that would actually help a little bit. But most general work like this is all done with a fairly narrow gauge like this, and just controlling your temperature will probably solve the problem. So. Let's do this over again. We're actually going to come back to what we did and rework it. So we're going to bring it in. 
I'm going to heat it up and we're going to fill it some more and we're going to get off. Let's take a look and see what we've done. Now we've got a nice flattened volcano. It really, we're all the way around the, um, the lead, which is a nice big flat lead. We've got a little bit too much solder through here. We would like to see a little bit of solder through here to help uh, reinforce the solder connection. Anything that's going to have a lot of um, effort applied to it or force. So a tube plugging in and pulling out is a big deal, right? These receivers will really grab the uh, pins. In fact, here's a Loctile tube right here. And um, so a little bit of extra solder. It's not touching anything. It's not, it didn't flow up into the receiver. It's, that's just fine. So don't fuss about it. You don't need to remove the solder. So let's do one more together. We've got our new temperature, so things should be a little better. Let's put a little bit of solder on the tip. Let's press in fairly firmly on this big, this big lead and let's, it's flowing beautifully. Let's just, just fill and we're off. We probably flowed through a little bit too much and we actually have a blob of solder left over. So let's bring down the temperature a little bit more. I'm going to bring it down to 375 C, which is 700 Fahrenheit. This happens sometimes. Sometimes you're just a little bit too hot or a little too cold. And we're going to come in and we're just going to rework this. You don't need to add any extra flux. All you have to do is come in and let's clean the tip, put the iron away. And there you go. And did we get some flow through on the other side? We did. And that's just about um, perfect. So heavier components that are being actively used on the board need to be really thoroughly soldered. So you have, in this case, because we've bent down the lead, we've got a mechanical connection and we have a solder connection and we have a solder connection. Let me get in there and get you on focus. So we've got a triple connection. So that should be a really long-lived installation.